Once again, welcome. I'd like to thank everyone who's been watching the videos, and I would also like to invite everyone to please subscribe. The subscribe button is right down there below this video, and if you just click on it, you'll subscribe, and I would love to have you aboard. A special thanks to everyone who has subscribed, and I'd love to have you as a subscriber too, so please subscribe. I was just looking through this uh, comic book, Magic Kingdom Comics, this was uh, published in conjunction with Disneyland's 60th, so that was 2015, uh, and it has this wonderful cover by the great John Loder, who's a friend of mine, and great job, John, incorporating the classic characters. This is just like a classic comic book, and we had some really fun stories in here, but this holds a special place in my heart because I actually was able to write a story for it, or actually adapt an existing story, which was from 1985, a celebration of Disneyland, and it's called Mickey Mouse's Incredible Disneyland Adventure. So you can see on the cover, there's my name. I was lucky enough to be able to adapt this comic book adventure, which was originally published in Italy in the long-running and very famous Topolino, magazine. Some of you may know that Topolino means Mickey Mouse in Italian. And I was very fortunate to be able to include some little tributes here. Like, I thought this character here looks like Freddie Moore, the famous Disney animator. So um, I made his name Fred. And there are just some real fun treats throughout the uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to have written comic books over the years and in fact it's my very favorite kind of writing of all the writing that I've done because I've always loved comic books and uh, if we look back at the classic comic books of the 1950s of course Dell was the publisher of the Disney comics at that time. The comic books were actually created by Western Publishing, the famous Disney licensee, and uh, Dell was the publisher until the 1960s when Western began publishing their own comics in their own imprint, which was Gold Key. In the 1950s, they had a lot of Disney comics as well as non-Disney comics. Here we have Mickey Mouse, Pluto, Jiminy Cricket, and of course there were adaptations of the various Disney movies like this wonderful Alice in Wonderland adaptation. But what I would really like to talk about today is the line of Dell comics called Dell Giants, such as this example here, a non-Disney example. Tom and Jerry, Summer Fun, and as you can see this great design down the ed edge here, the Dell Giants. So these were uh, deluxe comic books, uh, usually 100 pages, as opposed to the 30 pages that would be in something like this Mickey Mouse comic. And um, there were a good many of these Dell Giants published uh, in the 1950s, including non-Disney titles such as Tom and Jerry, Woody Woodpecker, Little Lulu, but there was also The Lone Ranger and Tarzan. Uh, Dell, or I should say Western really, had the license to all those characters, so it was, it was great fun to see these characters and these properties being published in these deluxe comics. So we also had something like Bugs Bunny's Christmas Funnies. See the Dell Giant logo here. Adaptations of Disney films, such as this wonderful Sleeping Beauty. Very, very elaborate. Which fit in well with that lavish animated feature. Starting in 1955, there were a good number of tie-ins with Disneyland. There was Donald Duck in Disneyland, Uncle Scrooge goes to Disneyland, even emphasis on the various lands or realms within Disneyland, such as Mickey Mouse and Frontierland. 
and really fun. Again, we have this classic logo, which I really love. It was fun to see Disney comics of a more recent vintage, if you call 1996 recent, using that classic logo in their own way. Here it's adapted across the top, and there were others that used it in the classic position down the side. So it's always great fun. Seasons were always a favorite of the Dell Giants. We already indicated Christmas, summer, Halloween, of course. There was something like Huey, Dewey, and Louie, Back to School. This first one was published in 1958, and there were several of these. And one thing that was really fun about them is that they uh, incorporated the adult Disney characters into these adventures that Huey, Dewey, and Louie were having as students. So, for example, Daisy was a teacher, uh, Donald Duck was the school bus driver, and even Clara Cluck, who's a character you don't see every day, she was given her theatrical background, the theater teacher, so here she's putting on a play with the kids. She was well known, of course, for her operatic appearances on stage with Mickey or Donald. So it was really fun use of the character. I have another example here, which was, uh, this issue was published in 1959, and um, the covers are so much fun. Uh, this was done by Tony Strobel, who is a very famous Disney comic book artist, a favorite with uh, Donald and his family, probably second only to the great Carl Barks. But what is quite amazing is that he drew almost this entire 100-page comic book as he did with this other issue here. And that includes the activities because the Giants usually included fun things to cut out, to draw, to color, to um, work puzzles. But it's quite the tour de force. Here's some examples of pages for you to look at. And a great tribute to the artistry of Tony Strobel. There are usually fun tie-ins for the summer, like vacation, beach party, and picnic party. And this cover is done by the great Paul Murray who was most well known for his Mickey Mouse comics, the back as well. Really fun. So one thing about Dell Giant covers, as opposed to the regular line of comics, is that the Dell Giants usually had painted covers. So this was drawn by Paul Murray, but then was painted as a painting, and the same with the back, to make it a little more elaborate these painted covers were usually finalized by artist Norm McGarry, who kind of specialized in these paintings for Dell. And again, we have stories drawn by Tony Strobel, Vacation at Grandma's, one of my favorite characters, Grandma Duck, to tie in with the whole kind of picnic summer vacation theme. But unfortunately, even though the cover's by Paul Murray, there's no Paul Murray stories inside. However, he did do some of the puzzles. Let me show you an example here. Help Donald get ready for his vacation trip. That's Paul Murray art. Memory quiz, various characters here. And then here in the inside back cover, we have vacation travel games, Nikki's car game and Donald's train game again with Paul Murray art. There are usually lots of fun elements to these Dell Giants. One of the best titles under the umbrella of the Dell Giant line was Silly Symphonies. And this was kind of a catch-all. There were nine issues in all. This was number six from 1956. And very interesting because the main story is this adaptation of the Floyd Gottfredson Sunday comic, Mickey Mouse Meets Robin Hood. This was drawn by Jack Bradbury to make Mickey in sort of the more modern style. Not an improvement, 
on the great Gottfredson art, unfortunately. But that great Robin Hood story has fortunately been published in modern times. For example, this free comic from Free Comic Book Day in 2007. We have the Sunday pages that made up this continuity about Mickey meeting Robin Hood. Really fun. Now in the second issue of Silly Symphonies, which I do not have, but we'll show you pictures, they published an adaptation of The Sorcerer's Apprentice, which was really cool because how often do you see adaptations of that sort of unusual film from Fantasia, that sequence from Fantasia. That adaptation was extremely well done because it was drawn by Paul Murray, who worked alongside the great Disney animator Fred Moore, who was a Mickey master. So Paul Murray really learned to draw Mickey so beautifully from Fred Moore himself. Now, interestingly, for the 50th anniversary of Fantasia, a new adaptation of The Sorcerer's Apprentice was done in the Mickey Mouse Adventures title. And that is a very well done adaptation of that Fantasia sequence. Actually more faithful, but I really enjoy the Paul Murray version that was run in the Silly Symphonies. But it's really fun that the Silly Symphonies title included adaptations of things like Fantasia. Certainly there were also adaptations of actual Silly Symphony shorts, such as The Country Cousin. And this is beautifully done by Al Hubbard. A wonderful version of this story. Uh, certainly there were others such as The Grasshopper and the Ants. But there were also specials such as Morris the Midget Moose, featurettes like Paul Bunyan, not in this issue, but in, in another one, and even some of the features, such as in this issue, Dumbo. And this was a new adaptation done at this time by Al Hubbard. So that, of course, is why we have Dumbo and Timothy on the cover. Uh, also, we have The Country Cousin down here. These were mostly new stories in these Silly Symphony issues, but there were also reprints like this story about Clara Cluck. This was from, what does it say here, 1943. And on the back, we can see Clara, we can see Morris the Midget Moose, Timothy and The Country Cousin, Dumbo, and Bongo, because there's a Bongo adaptation in this issue as well. So really fun and a great mix of brand new stories and reprints. Another thing to note about the Silly Symphonies issues is that they had these really wonderful new tales from Old Mother Goose. Now, New Tales from Old Mother Goose was a feature that started in Good Housekeeping magazine in 1943. So they reprinted some of them and then had new ones drawn, some of them by Paul Murray. So that's a really fun addition to the Silly Symphonies line, which is a great part of these Dell Giant comic books. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of brief overview of some issues and hope you'll come back again for more videos remember to like and subscribe. Please join us next time when we'll have Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne, Peter Parker, Shoeshine Boy, He's Humble and Lovable, to discuss the issue of identity theft. See you then.